All right, we back with the boxing clink and more. Y'all know what it is. One time for the one time. It's your boy CJ Goodfella. Appreciate everybody um, that tuned in for the live fight uh, and live commentary we did. Uh, wasn't planning on doing it, but I did it at the last minute. And we had an amazing live stream. Now, let me tell you uh, what I thought about uh, Easter and Mikey fight. We tried squeezing a little bit Luis Ortiz towards the end. All right, I thought that... Um, you know, Robert boxed to the end. He kept his discipline. You know, he used his jab. He used angles like he hasn't used in the past. He, you know, he, he did what they designed him to do. But one observation that I did make that I don't know if anybody else has made because I haven't got a lot of feedback or seen a lot of videos on YouTube was the fact that his dad still was the chief in, in command, the number one guy in command in that corner. His dad still was the guy calling the shots and Kevin Cunningham was just giving the, was giving assistance, you know. And, um, hey, that is what it is. You know what I'm saying? That was, you know, that's what he hired. I don't know what he paid Kevin Cunningham um, for, you know. Uh, excuse me. I don't know what he paid Kevin Cunningham for. But, um, but obviously, uh, you know, he was just there to assist. And it seems like his dad still was in chief of command. But, uh, well, you know, from the beginning, even though I gave the first two rounds to Robert Easter Jr., um, I could just see Mikey Garcia was making boxing moves. He was he was doing things to set things up in the future. He was filling them out, and I could just tell Robert Jr. was expanding, expending too much energy, um, boxing and moving and fighting his heart out. Even when Mikey, I feel dropped the first two rounds. Mikey was just patient, cool, moving his head like he hadn't moved his head before. He was on his toes. He was fading. He was jittery, and that was by design. He was doing things that we haven't seen before. And like I said, just because you don't see a fighter do it, don't mean he isn't capable of uh, doing it. And Mark, Mikey showed that. Mikey set up a lot of things. Everybody say, well, Mikey's just a one-two fighter. And I told you people, I said, Mikey had an excellent left hook to the body, which you've seen today. He had an excellent left hook to the head. And he had an excellent left hook, left hook to the body, left hand to the head. Left hook to the head. And he set it up. And uh, everybody say, he's just a basic one-two fighter. And I'm telling people, man, this dude has quick hands, man. His hands are explosive. Don't let the body physique fool you. And Robert Easter Jr. never got into a rhythm. The only real shots that Robert landed was a jab, occasional jab here and there, and a the right hand to the body. That's what he landed. Other than that, he never found the range for the straight right hand to the head. He never found the one-two. He never did the uh, the jab with the overhand right. That's my dog. <laughs> he woke now. But uh, the jab with overhand to the right, uh, overhand right. He never landed left hook. He landed occasional, you know, left hook where he pivot, turned into a check hook where he pivot off of that. But other than that, he was repetitive. Um, and when it was time in the championship rounds, when he was, you know, the lead was insurmountable, he didn't sit down and bang like Bunny, like we accustomed to Bunny sitting down and bang. Um, so at the end of the day, when he was supposed to go for broke and turn into the old Robert Easter Jr. and swap and bang it out with Mikey, he didn't. And Mikey dropped him with a uh, with a with a jab that got him out, with a right hand that got him out of position, and came back with a left hook with his hands dropped. So Mikey showed the power. Um, like I told you, I didn't expect Robert Easter Jr. to get knocked out. I thought he had too much pride. I knew Mikey was a good puncher, but I didn't think Mikey was a Mike Tyson S type puncher or even a Regis Progress type puncher at 140. I think he's a really, really good puncher, but I didn't, I didn't see him knocking out Mikey Roberts Jr. I didn't see that coming. That's just my opinion, all right. But, um, but like I said, Mike, Mikey made boxing moves. He's a fundamental, masterful boxer, and he showed you tonight that height shit didn't matter, that reach shit didn't matter. Like I told you guys, that did not matter because Mikey Garcia. He's a skillful boxer. It's time for you guys to give him credit for being a skillful boxer. Now, is he a cherry picker? Yes. Has he fought anybody for anybody's career? No. Do I see him as being a pound for pound, all time great pound for pound number one? No. He barely inside the top five. But right now, the pound for pound list is a mess right now because everybody ain't fighting everybody. Right now, I don't have a pound for pound number one, but it starts with Terrence Crawford. It's just vacant, and then I just go down the line. But Mikey Garcia showed the skills today. He showed the ability. He showed you guys the jab. He showed you he was just more than a textbook, basic one-two puncher. He showed head movement. He showed bouncing on the feet. Y'all guys said he was draining left the way in early. He showed stamina. And Robert Jr. got tired. You know, he got tired. And when he got tired, Mikey Garcia went into a third, fourth, fifth gear. When Robert Jr. couldn't get out of second or third gear. So, you know, that's, that's levels to this shit, man. And this is the perfect way to say it was levels. And you know, people thought this height and that reach and that speed stuff matter. When you got a guy like Mikey Garcia, who's a fundamental and, and technician in the ring, you have a chance to win. Like I said at the beginning, Mikey is a boxer. He ain't a track star. He ain't a swimmer. He ain't a sprinter. 
He ain't a hurdler. He ain't a gymnastic. He ain't a hooper. He ain't a football player, all right? Mikey, Robert Richard Jr. is an athlete that boxes. That's it. He's a very athletic fighter. He ain't a true boxer. Mikey is a boxer, a technician, a fundamental marvel. And when you got all those fundamental marvels and, and he got quick hands the way he do and people underrate his hand speed and he underrate ma uh, masterful things like as far as intangible things you can't see, like distance and timing. And you got that master and you got quick hands and you got good punch placement. You got great power at 135 or really good power at 135. You're going to beat a lot of guys, man. A lot, nobody going to fade Mikey Garcia at 135. He easily said at 135 and rule the throne and become a Hall of Famer and beat everybody that came through and do, and do a Triple G and don't move nowhere. He can easily do that. But he's not going to do that. He called. He said he wanted to move up from 140, 147 to fight Earl Spence. I got the interview on my TV with Earl Spence. I haven't ran it yet. I got it paused. And at the end of the day, you know, people going to say, well, free, you know, I hear people say, well, free smoke. Earl Spence, see, look, he going to fight Mikey Garcia. What about Terrence Crawford? People know the business of why Terrence Crawford can't cross that street. You know, we know that. You know, my, who, do you, who do you guys want to see Earl Spence fight? A Yugis? And I think that's a solid fight, but I'd rather see him fight Mikey Garcia. Omar Figueroa is a possibility for a big Texas fight, but, you know, he had issues with catching a, allegedly catching a DUI. You know, so I'll take Earl and Mikey over Yugis. Yugis can wait his turn for his mandatory shot. I ain't sweating him. But I'll take Mikey over Earl rather than see Earl wait around and wait for the Danny and Sean Porter winner. And they still might not fight him and might go fight Keith Thurman or act like they injured and not fight Earl until next year. You know, let Earl Spence get three fights a year. If Mikey want to fight him, I know he's not going to get no credit for it in Earl Spence, which we'll talk about it tomorrow. He's not going to get no credit for it. But, hey, it is what it is. Go get you a payday. Go build you a fan base. It's going to be a big fight in Texas. And for Robert Easter Jr., um, it is what it is. Back to the drawing board. It's only one loss. It was one competitive loss. I mean, I mean, I ain't going to say really competitive. But it was one loss versus one of the best pound for pound fighters, you know, ranked by people this year. You know what I'm saying? In this time. So at the end of the day, Robert Jr., just get back to the drawing board. Um, you know, see what you did wrong. You boxed your ass off today. But at the end of the day, you didn't complete the mission. You did. You you was a you was a jab and a right hand to the body. Now it's time to find ways to you know make an overhand right, a looping right hand. It's find a way. It's trying to find ways to make that straight right hand a little bit more tricky. It's trying. It's time to find ways to use the feint to to disrupt guys like Mikey Garcia's rhythm, so you can get the right hand off. It's time to show. It's time to jab and hook and, and turn the jab into a hook and, and spin off of. It's time to learn the tricks to the trade. I mean, Emmanuel Stewart. Would have done uh, magic with Robert Richard Jr. Robert Richard Jr. was very, very basic today, and basic wasn't going to cut it. People say, all you got to do is this and that. Basic was not going to cut it versus the caliber of fighter Mikey Garcia is. He's a talented, elite level, blue chipper type of fighter, all right? You know, and that's the business right there, man. That is the real business, and, um, you know, you know, Mikey Garcia, they can keep, they keep saying he ain't fought nobody, he ain't fought nobody, he ain't fought nobody. Now he's he getting a nice little resume up. Now he's going up, possibly to 147, and fight Free, Mo, Free Smoke Jr. and Earl Spence Jr. Let's see what happens, man. I would like to see him fight Lomachenko. I'd like to see him get in the World Box Super Series tournament, but that's not going to happen now. And uh, like I told people, you know, he don't have nobody else to fight. You know, he don't have no other choice but to move up to 147 unless he goes to the zone and gets some money because guess what? At, one four, at 135, Lomachenko and Beltran, who are the champions, are with top rank. You go to 140 pounds, Josh Taylor, Regis Progress, and a few other guys, there's a 140-pound tournament, okay? Then uh, the World Box Super Series tournament, Jose Ramirez, WC champion, is trained by his brother, and then he's with top rank, and top rank is Mikey is beefing. You know, Maurice Hooker might fight Alex Sacedo, you know, and Alex Sacedo win, that's top rank, so that's gone for right now. So he don't have no other choice but to go to 147 at this point if he want marquee money and big money. You know, if he want to go to 135, stay at 135 and fight Richard Kami, a high-risk, low-reward type fight, well, so, so be it. You know what I'm saying? But if you want that big money, you want to be a pay-per-view star, you want to go fight Terrence Crawford. You know what I'm saying? But it's the Boxing Clinic and more. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit the bell icon. Also, we on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Check those links out. We do some good work. I'm really working hard on Twitter and Instagram and Facebook. So check it out. Also, we got the new podcast, Raw and Uncut, Uncensored. Me and, my, and the Cali Enigma. I'm going to link the Cali Enigma channel. Link it to the description. But for the podcast link, you click on it. You go to your web browser. Download the free CastBox app. CastBox app. Sign up with Facebook or Google account. It's easy. Comment. Subscribe. We got nine episodes of Raw and Uncut from 50 Cent to Floyd Beef to, to boxing to political Donald Trump. So check it out. 
Also, subscribe to my brother, McCallie Enigma, my co-host. He in L.A. for the fight tonight. So, you're going to want to subscribe and check out some of the interviews he got. Y'all know what it is. Subscribe, share, share, share. One time for the one time. And know we do more than boxing. So, check out our playlist and our archives. We gone.